Hi, I'm R.J. Anderson, author of the Knife series for ages 11 and up, and also the upcoming Ultraviolet, a paranormal thriller for older teens. And I'm Jackson Pierce, author of Sisters Red and the forthcoming Sweet League, which are fairy tales told with a modern twist. Jackson and I had our first books come out in the same year, and we enjoy each other's writing, so it seemed like it would be fun to do a joint interview. I'll start with the first question. So what first drew you to the idea of modernizing the tale of Red Riding Hood in particular? Was there some particular detail about that story that made you think, hey, I could totally split Red into two sisters with knives fighting werewolves in contemporary Atlanta? I've always loved Little Red Riding Hood because there are so many different ways to interpret the text. I mean, you can see Red as a foolish girl, you can see her as a damsel in distress, you can see her as her own hero in the story. And each of those interpretations gives the story an entirely different feel. I felt like the person Red would become after the attack varied immensely depending on which version and interpretation you were reading. I wanted to tell a version where the encounter with the wolf made Red fierce and powerful and intense and fearless, and I also wanted to tell a version where it made Red clever and tough but kind of lonely. The result was having two girls share the role of Red, which is the two sisters in Sisters Red. Oh, that's really interesting. Two stories for the price of one. Also, I wanted to write a book about a girl who did not fall in love with the sexy werewolf, because, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, you certainly do that. The Fenris give off this horrible creeper vibe. It was actually really important to me that the wolves also kind of play two different roles. When they're wolves, they're monsters, and they're horrible, and they're terrible. But when they're humans, they're really handsome, and they're really good at luring girls to their deaths. Yes, that metaphor works very well, I think. So while we're on the topic of inspiration, why did you decide to write about fairies? You know, were you inspired by modern animated fairy tales, or were you more into the older, more historical versions? Well, I grew up reading a lot of fairy tales and folklore. Plus, I loved the flower fairy books when I was a kid. But as a teenager, I was also into reading superhero comics, and those stories were full of fierce, powerful young women, some of whom could fly or change their size. And I also used to sketch a lot, and one day as I was doodling in my sketchbook, I drew this fierce-looking white-haired fairy throwing a dagger, and I called her Knife. And at that point, my brain just said, hello, there's a story here. And why did you decide to go with smaller-sized fairies instead of human-sized fairies, which are becoming more and more prevalent in books? Well, I like the idea of small fairies because they'd face challenges that larger ones wouldn't. Predators, for instance. And I also like the idea of subverting the notion that small equals cute and inconsequential. Also, I'd always felt sorry for Tinkerbell, who's so obviously in love with Peter Pan and doesn't stand a chance. So the idea of writing a human-fairy relationship where the fairy was small seemed like an interesting twist. That last part is actually one of my favorite things about your books, that they're tough despite their size and their presumed cuteness, and, you know, I always felt really bad for Tinkerbell, too. Okay, let's go back to you and Sisters Red. You have a sister with whom you seem to be fairly close and share a lot of fun, at least judging by the videos you've made with her. What would you say is the closest similarity in your relationship with your sister and the relationship between Scarlet and Rosie? My sister and I were actually not always very close. We argued a lot when we were children, and it wasn't until we were in high school and we were on the color guard together when I was a senior and she was a freshman that we kind of started to understand one another as individuals. Instead of just, that's my annoying sister, I realized that she was a separate person with her own likes and dislikes and needs and wants that had nothing to do with me, which was a terrible blow to my ego. Once we started to reestablish our relationship and understand one another as people instead of just as siblings, I think we actually became closer as sisters. I think Scarlett and Rosie share a similar bond. You know, they're so loving and caring and devoted to one another as sisters that occasionally they have a hard time seeing one another as an actual individual outside of their relationship. Well, that's obviously why Rosie and Scarlett's relationship feels so authentic. Isn't it nice to know that everything in life is potential writing fodder? Or, well, maybe terrifying if you're not the writer. <laughs> is there anything that had a similar effect on your series? You know, beyond writing what you didn't see in fairy tales, were you inspired by anything in particular? At the time I wrote the first draft of Knife, I was attending a school in a rural part of New Jersey. The campus had a lovely walk through the woods past a lot of big old trees, some of them were oaks, and it also had a good-sized pond. So as I was thinking of where Knife and her sister fairies would live, my daily walks around campus were quite inspiring. And then the personalities of two of the fairies in the book, Thorn and Wink, were sort of loosely inspired by a couple of friends of mine. 
My friends live in fear of ending up in my books. They tell me stories with like the stipulation, Jackson, you can never put this in a book. Do you understand? And I'm always like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can imagine. Fortunately, I don't think my two friends would recognize themselves in this case. It was more like using them as a springboard than a template, if you know what I mean. Now, here's another question for you. For me, story ideas often come from realizing that I can't find a book about a subject or a particular type of character or idea that interests me, or at least I can't find as many books as I would like. So I have to write a book to fill that gap or scratch that itch for readers like myself. Do you find that too? And if so, what did you want to do in Sisters Red that you hadn't seen done before in a YA novel? I feel like in YA there are a lot of love triangles and they're almost always between a girl and two boys. I wanted to show a different kind of love triangle, the one whose sides weren't necessarily all built with romantic love. Both Rosie and Scarlet are really torn between things they love. You know, Rosie loves Scarlet and she loves Silas, and Scarlet loves Rosie, but she also loves hunting. Just like any love triangle, the characters are going to lose something when they make a choice, but I kind of felt like making that choice a blood family member, somebody you care deeply about, somebody who helped raise you, that's sort of up to the stakes from, you know, if I choose this guy, the other guy is going to leave and I'll be lonely. Oh, definitely. There's so much potential in love triangles that aren't just romantic, especially when all three sides are connected, like Rosie and Scarlet and Silas are, so that everybody has something to lose. So let's finish off by talking about our latest and upcoming projects. I hear you have written another modernized fairy tale, this one based on Hansel and Gretel. It's called Sweetly. Can you tell us a little bit about that and when it's coming out? Sweetly is a retelling of Hansel and Gretel about a girl who gets thrown out of her house and she ends up in a South Carolina chocolatier and discovers that the witch of her nightmare is kind of lurking right outside the door. Sweetly has a great cover, I have to say. I'm really looking forward to reading it. As for me, my latest book is Arrow, the third in the Knife series, in which the fairies of the oak and their human friends are forced to fight against an evil fairy empress for their freedom. That's in bookstores right now. But in June 2011, I'll be coming out with my first book for older teens called Ultraviolet. It's about a 16-year-old girl who can hear colors and see sounds, who ends up in psychiatric hospital after claiming to have disintegrated a schoolmate with nothing but the power of her mind. What really happened? Well, you have to read the book to find out. Both Arrow and Ultraviolet are published by Orchard Books. And I am totally fangirling about both of those books because they sound absolutely fantastic. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for talking with me today, RJ. Thanks for the interview, Jackson. And best wishes with Sisters Red and Sweetly and all your upcoming projects.